I've been to many places around Japan in my videos, but I only go to the places I love more than once, and Oshima is one of them. And today we decided to get out of our busy lives and head to the island only a couple hours outside of Tokyo. From Ofuna Station to Shonan and Oshima Station, we rode the monorail, which is a lot smoother than a regular train. We're going to Enoshima today to check out some of the new stuff that they have. And we're also on the monorail right now. And I don't think I've ever rode the monorail before, but I feel like I'm on a roller coaster because it's like going up and down. Getting to the island, you have to stroll through Subana Street, which is a street filled with local tropical restaurants and cafes. The street is usually full of people, but as you can see, because of both the weather and the pandemic, it was pretty empty. It's going to be interesting to see the island without any tourists. Look at these. Look at these. <laughs> Before moving ahead, since the weather was quite unpredictable, this day we got some hand warmers from Family Mart and got our Eno passes at Fujisawa City Tourist Center. If you follow them on Facebook, you can get a free gift. The staff here also speaks English. It's a beautiful day. This is like <laughs> totally empty compared to when the last time I came. It was so crowded. Oh my gosh, like it's, there's nobody here. How to not let the weather ruin your trip. Don't let it. Wise words, I know, but until I saw Enoshima in a rainy scene, I didn't realize how gorgeous it would be. Even though I've been here many times, we thought we'd add a little adventure to the trip by exploring some of the local side streets later on in this video and try new local foods. It's also close to the holidays and we heard there was a beautiful illumination display by the lighthouse, our first one since we got married. A gift. Oh, yes. Sake. Sake. This is for unlucky year. So anybody that's this age is unlucky. Oh, the one in the middle. So 19, 33, 37. Yeah. 25, 42, and 61. This is not your year. Almost there. So many steps. Oh, so many. A little education on this shrine that we're at. This is part of Enoshima Shrine and we were educated by the staff on what this dome-like building displayed. And he told us that this particular building holds statues of Myon Benzaiten, which is also known as the god of artistry, music, and wisdom, and Hapi Benzaiten, who is known as the goddess of good fortune, wealth, and war. We were also told of the Enoshima love story legend, which legend has it that this area used to be terrorized by storms and natural disasters, plus a five-headed dragon. One day, the goddess Benzaiten appeared, forming Enoshima Island as she heard the cries of the people below. And once the dragon saw her, he fell deeply in love. The dragon asked for her hand in marriage, and the goddess accepted on one condition that the dragon would live to protect rather than terrorize, and he agreed. Together, Benzaiten and the dragon became the protectors of the area and the land prospered. Knowing the history behind the places you visit gives it much more meaning. Plus, I love that Japan has so much folklore and legends. The energy is just different when you hear of tales passed on for generations. In this shrine, there are small ceramic snakes that are said to be messengers and assistants to the goddesses, and if you write your wish on the bottom of the snake, the message will be delivered and will come true. So I'm gonna write my wish on the snake, because when you write your wish on the snake, they say that it will tell the gods what you want so it will come true. I'm not gonna tell you what I'm wishing for, so. But on here they have like the different kanji that you can put, so 
like a bunch of different ones here. Mm -hmm. So there's like money and health and study and all that stuff. So all right. Okay. What do you, do you want? No, it's a here? secret. It's a secret. It's a secret. Okay. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of opportunities in Japan to wish for something. It's a form of manifestation in this culture, and I love it and I embrace it. I'm curious to know though, what would you wish for? Wealth, love, success, good grades? Comment down below. Enoshima houses the first ever outdoor escalator built in the 1950s. If you have an Eno Pass, you can ride it all the way to the top of the island. Inventions like these start with innovative minds. If you're questioning whether or not you should do the thing you want to do because nobody else is doing it, be the first to do it. My hair is really <laughs> messy from the rain. I'm soaking wet. We are at uh, Nakatsunomiya Shrine. Shrine? Temple? Shrine. Shrine. It's a shrine and we're at the top. We took the escalator, which is over here. This escalator was built in the 1950s, I believe. So it's like the first out outdoor escalator in Japan. So you can take them up. It's actually really, really beautiful when it's raining. Like everything is very peaceful. There's not so many people here. And I'm getting wet. Oh no. I like the view. I like the view. be the the world number one uh, the most handsome or coolest man in the world <laughs> these are so fun to read oh, this is cool like I want my boobs to get bigger <laughs> please make I want to be beautiful everybody's beautiful what are you talking about nobody needs to wish for beauty we're all beautiful <laughs> this one uh, wants to have uh, eyelines like thighs oh really oh yeah so a lot of Japanese people wish that they had lines in their eyes like eyelids I guess because a lot of Japanese people kind of lack eyelids right I mean they have eyelids but it's just like not as defined so a lot of Japanese people want that the little succulents they're so tiny there's a lone fruit in the tree it survived you can get hot soup in the vending machine if you get cold so red bean. near the enoshima lighthouse also known as the sea candle is a botanical garden you can see plant life year round this garden was established by an English merchant named Samuel Cocking during the Meiji period and has influences of both Western and Japanese gardens. You can ride your way up to the top of the lighthouse to view a large portion of Japan and Mount Fuji. At this time you couldn't see it, but it was still a beautiful scene.
We're waiting for the illumination to start. This is the first illumination of the year for us as a married couple. <laughs> I feel like this one is gonna be really good though. I think so. Like this one's gonna be the best one. I'm really excited to see all of Enoshima just light up. Like there, there's legit lights everywhere on the ground, in the sky, in the, on the garbage cans, they're everywhere. No matter what happens in my life, I've already succeeded because this was the first year I was able to jump from heights that used to scare me. The first year I've been married to an amazing human and the first year I inevitably took a few steps back but actually took hundreds of steps forward. In this life, I plan to make a difference and next year I wish to create value in the lives of others. Evolution is important, and I hope that those who follow evolve with me. These lights have been a long-running tradition since 1999, and one of the greatest winter illuminations in the Kanto region. I think Japan illuminations beat America by the thousands, in my opinion. I can't wait to see more next year. This place is beautiful! <laughs> Going to our hotel now, and we're gonna have a day two here in Enoshima. And I've never actually been here when it was cold and uh, sort of like winter, so this is kind of cool and interesting to see all the stuff during this year. We are headed to our next destination, which is breakfast. <laughs> I'm so excited. We're gonna go to a cafe and then we're gonna go back to Enoshima Island and Yuji's gonna see the caves. <laughs> but first, coffee. Look at this coffee, it's huge. <laughs> this is the same size as the one that we went to. I think so. Looks good. Okay, I got my breakfast and this is at Quinto. Look at this, like I'm so excited. And this coffee is like gorgeous. Like what is this beautiful place? I'm so excited about it. Okay. I was literally speechless with the cafe we went to this morning, but now we're off to Katase Kaigan West Beach area for a little morning walk with the husband. On very clear days, you can see Mount Fuji quite clearly, 
The beaches are usually packed with people from all over Japan, but now that the season is a bit cooler, you can see surf clubs and surfers out in the waters. Okay, so we are down a street off the side of Enoshima Shrine, like the big Tori gate. And this is where all of the fishermen live. Way back in the day, like a lot of people lived here in some of these older houses, and there's a lot of history here, and people don't know much about this street. So it's just literally the suburbs. But like, we found this thing. Edward Sylvester Morse, 1877, in commemoration of Edward Sylvester Morse laboratory the first marine laboratory in japan wow that's interesting oh, yeah, like all these cool. streets are so old you know me i love the back streets of japan if i get the chance to explore deeper i will these back alleys are homes to fishermen and here remains original buildings of the island I feel weird walking down here. It doesn't even feel like Enoshima here. No. Like There's not. houses. <laughs> A lot of tourists don't come here. Right? No. Yeah. There are still small local shops and restaurants, and it's strange to think only a few steps away are the most touristy of areas. It was pretty quiet and peaceful. That must have been there for centuries. Nobody moved that bike. <laughs> <laughs> There's some Enoshima dishes. These streets embody wabi-sabi, and what that means in Japan is as long as your home is a place you love, care for, and are at peace, you should learn to embrace its faults instead of hiding them. Wabi-sabi takes on a couple meanings. The appreciation of imperfections, and I believe this fisherman town had wabi-sabi. Honestly, after you live here in Japan for so long, side streets and neighborhoods start to really excite you because you've seen all the touristy things, right? <laughs> so like seeing this kind of stuff, like how the locals live, you know, the touristy spots always have like that local neighborhood. So you, you kind of want to see it and just, it's just interesting to see how people live normally day to day. We headed back up the Escar with our Eno Pass. We had to get a new one the next day since it's only a one day pass. Just a reminder. But on this day, we watched much, much further to head towards the caves. Yes, Enoshima has caves and they're really incredible. They say that one of the caves connects to the base of Mount Fuji, which isn't a for sure fact, but if it's true, that's pretty cool. So they told Yuji to be careful because the birds will come and dive at this. But what is this called? Sazae. Sazae. So it's like a Ooh. oyster? Is it oyster? Uh, some sort of shellfish. And now we're at Okutsumiya Shrine, and they are known for turtles. I've actually been here a while back. There's a mini alcove near the shrine with a dragon on top to pray for luck. The line was long this day, so here's a clip of me going in a few years ago. I haven't walked this much since the beginning of the year, so this was much more challenging than I remembered. But the sea was as clear and beautiful as I remembered. The ocean is just pure energy to me. If you had the choice to live near the ocean, a mountain, or a forest, where would you live? Carved by aeons of tidal erosion, the Iwaya Caves consists of two caves, which are 152 meters and 56 meters deep, respectively. And one of these caves houses the birthplace of Enoshima Shrine. Many worshippers say that Benzaiten appeared here and is now known as a power spot 
and the number one spiritual site on Enoshima. Oh, these are steep. <laughs> we made it, you guys. Huh. We're too old for this. On our way back, we decided to check out the Love Locks, which is also known as the Dragon's Love Bell in honor of the love story between Ben Zaiten and the five-headed dragon. They say if you ring the bell and put a love lock on the gates, you will have eternal love. Sadly, because of the pandemic, we couldn't get the love lock, so we just rang the bell. After we witnessed the island together, we decided to try some local foods. For me, it's tough since I have a lot of allergies, but this cute little mom and pop shop called Kamome's Kitchen was able to accommodate. So in Enoshima, shirasu is famous. What is shirasu, you ask? Well, it's a Japanese anchovy filled with nutrients. Some tourists have a hard time eating it because they have little eyes, so I'm wondering, would you try shirasu? So I'm eating the little fish, and this is actually my first time trying shirasu. I know Enoshima is very famous for it, but I also I kind of feel like weird, like eating the small fish with the eyes. <laughs> it's good, like it doesn't have any flavor, it doesn't taste bad. Interesting texture, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> he gave me sesame oil with some pepper and salt, so it tastes really good. If you have allergies, they can get rid of the egg and the soy sauce, so this is very nice. You can eat like the local food without worrying. <laughs> yeah. We are at Enoshima Aquarium right now, so we're gonna look around. I've actually never been to this aquarium. The Enoshima Aquarium is known for its jellyfish display and a popular place to go if you live in the Tokyo area. This aquarium is also known for many famous TV dramas, so it's the perfect place for a date where you can recreate your favorite drama scenes. I was pretty amazed with all the creatures here. Many of them I actually haven't seen before in other aquariums. It's been years since I've been back here and Enoshima redid their station to honor the legend of the island. The station now displays a picture of Benzai Ten and her lover along with an eastern feel. The way it's lit up at night was really beautiful and I'm glad I was able to make these newer memories with my amazing husband. We are saying goodbye to Enoshima. Thank you for having us Enoshima. We're going to take the romance car back. It's a more comfortable train ride. It's a little bit more expensive than a regular train, but if you take it, um, I think you'll feel a lot more relaxed <laughs> than if you were to take the other train. Um, I think it's a little bit less crowded and yeah, it's easy to take. We slept quite comfortably all the way home and had the best time. What was your favorite part about this trip? Also, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer, so comment down below. And don't forget to like and share this video because it helps me out a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video.